What's up, YouTube? Uh, welcome back to the channel. So today, um, we're going to be looking at my 2003 Tahoe again. Um, this time, I have an ABS light on. So if you're going down the road, it'll try to put the ABS on and the light will pop on. Um, I'm going to show you how to diagnose what I think is wrong with it um, with a multimeter, and then we can go from there. The For reference, I put a new wheel bearing on this probably two years ago when I bought the truck. So the wheel bearing on this side is only two years old. Uh, it's a pretty common fix on these trucks. So um, I'll take you along for the ride. We got the jack under it and I'll just um, take the tire off and then we'll get, uh, get going. All right, so if you're working on a garage floor and you don't have a nice fancy lift, um, you're gonna wanna crack the lug nuts loose before you actually finish jacking the truck up. Otherwise you'll just spin the wheel. So we'll do that now. <sighs> Now when you tighten them, they're supposed to be in a star pattern. When you loosen them, it doesn't matter. So we're just going around. So, so they're all loose. Let's check this out. Get off the ground. And then I have a jack stand back here. Make sure we're being safe. Uh, I do have an electric impact. It's a half inch Bauer. Throw that in the frame for you guys. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, if you, so I torque these lug nuts to 110, 120 foot pounds when I'm done putting the tire on. And it'll, it'll take them off, but it hammers for a while. So I still crack them loose. It's just annoying to listen to a hammer. For Now an impact will take lug nuts off um, just on their own without having to crack them loose on the floor. But this one doesn't, it's, like I said, it's pretty weak. So I just do that first. Now, the wheel bearing is under the rotor, um, so I'm gonna have to take the brake caliper off. To get this off, there's two um, 18 millimeter bolts. There's one right there. There's one, see that one down there? It's the same one. So we're just gonna peel those off, um, take the caliper off, and then we'll have access to the wheel bearing. So I'm gonna set you guys down and get, to get started on that. Now these are torqued to 80 foot pounds, and I also put Loctite on them. Um, when I put them back in, so you're gonna want to get yourself a breaker bar <laughs> to get these loose uh, I did that before I got the camera going. So we're just gonna use a ratchet and a ratcheting wrench to get these out But I had to stand on them a little bit for sure to get them out Oop, going that way. You want to be careful this is your brake hose uh, You're not gonna hurt it just just wrenching next to it, but you want to make sure you don't refine it or nothing And I realized I probably screwed up showing you guys on video through the camera. I was showing you the wheel bearing bolt. The brake caliper bolt is that big one right there. I showed you guys that one. That's the brake caliper bolt. It's an 18 millimeter, um, so as long as you have an 18 millimeter, you'll be all right. I think that one's a 15 or something. My bad. And there she comes loose. I'm gonna have to pry those pads back. Let me get the screwdriver. Set that 
for there for now. Now, this is connected by your brake hose, so you don't just want to let it hang. Um, you can get these fancy hooks on Amazon for like 10 bucks or something. Or a piece of wire, a zip tie, anything's fine. Tighten this out of the way somewhere. Okay. So I don't know what you guys can see, but just kind of got it chilling right there without putting tension on the hose. As you can see, this wheel bearing is pretty new. Like I said, I changed it in the past two years. I think it was almost two years ago exactly I changed it. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, caliper off, uh, we can actually test the wheel bearing. So you don't need to take the caliper off uh, to do what I'm about to do, but I just did it because um, I know what's wrong with it. But I'm going to take you guys through how I diagnosed this. So um, you see this cord running through here, this wire that goes up into the... Um, past the strut mount there. Uh, I got a, an ABS light in the cab and the code was C0223 left ABS channel free spins. So I have a code reader that'll read ABS codes. Um, and if you don't, you could take it to your local advanced auto parts, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, whatever. And they'll be able to read it for you and tell you which side you're dealing with so you can start figuring stuff out. Um, but I got the ABS code and then you need to diagnose if it's, um, you know, something in the wiring harness or if it's something in the wheel bearing. So I know it's in the wheel bearing, but I'm going to take you through and, and uh, show you how I figured that out. So um, the first thing you need to do is this wire needs to come loose. Um, let's see if I can get you guys at a better angle here. So if you'll see, there it is right here. There's a little uh, connector. Um, for the truck harness. So what you do is just get a little push tab, push it up, push the truck side of the connector off. So that's what that looks like. You just push up on this little deal here and push that out of the way. And then this is mounted to the strut tower. So you could push that forward. Maybe, yep. And then it'll slide, see it's got this little bracket here it sits on, so you push it forward and it'll come loose. And this is the wheel bearing. Um, now I'm just gonna get it down here where it can work on it a little bit better. So you just stick a little screwdriver into here and this, this opens up and then you've got your harness. Um, so you see you've got the two, two little prongs in there. Let me see if I can find you guys. You got your two little prongs in there. Um, so I'm just gonna be messing with those. So when you see me doing stuff on the multimeter in a minute, it's just those two connectors. All right, now what I did I just connected two alligator clamps into the um, ABS connector. Same wire we've been working with. I ran into my multimeter leads. And then I set us up over here so that we can see what's going on. Um, now I use Mitchell DIY, um, which is, I think it's 30 bucks a year for, a, um, for one vehicle. So I, I have my truck and I, I buy whatever. If someone wants me to work on something, I'll buy their vehicle on the software and then you can use it to look up um, check engine lights, uh, other codes, diagnostic stuff, wiring diagrams. Uh, it's super helpful. Uh, and maybe I'll do a video on that later if people are interested. But uh, in any case, I pulled the um, um, schematic and the troubleshooting guide for the, the code that I had for the free spin on the left. Um, speed wheel sensor. So I've got my two leads hooked up just into the wiring. It doesn't really matter which way you, you uh, hook them up. So first um, we're going to check resistance. So you can see there's a there's a system. Did you perform an ABS diagnostic system check? I did. Um, uh, you don't really need to for this. It's That's just like the first step in all of these diagrams, but you know, just plug your scan tool in. Um, the second step is just to use your scan tool, figure out which codes you got. And then the third one is um, for aid and support the vehicle, disconnect the speed wheel sensor, which you watched me do. And then we're gonna use a multi DMM just means multimeter. So we're just gonna use a multimeter to measure resistance. Um, and as you can see that, that first red box, it's between 700 and 10,000 ohms. So I'm just gonna turn our multimeter to ohms. Put the light on for you guys. Um, 
So as you can see, this is actually in kilo ohms. Um, if you jump to over a thousand ohms with this meter, it just says overload, so we're gonna have to stick to kilo ohms. Um, but it's one kilo ohm is a thousand ohms. So right now we're at a thousand ohms, a thousand thirty ohms um, on the multimeter. That's within our seven hundred to ten thousand range. So we're good. Um, the resistance check pans out. That means that the internal circuit for the wheel bearing is all intact. The resistance is as it should be. We can move on to step four. Step four um, is in millivolts, so we're going to switch to volts. And I believe it's AC. Yeah, AC voltage. So your multimeter will have two settings. It'll have DC, which is these two lines right here, and then AC, which is this squiggly line right here. Um, some multimeters will even have like a diagram, like mine says AC right here. Okay, and it says millivolts, so we're going to switch to millivolts. There you go. So you see how the little V in the top corner here now says millivolts instead of just volts. Uh, and this is an AM probe, I forget, the AM510. Uh, Fluke makes them. They're like their budget homeowner brand. I've had really good luck with it. I like it a lot. It's got a lot of cool settings. Um, but your settings on your multimeter will be different. So, you know, just look for ohms, which is resistance, and then volts or millivolts, and just make sure you're in the right range. So then what's it want us to do? It wants us to spin the wheel by hand as fast as possible and then measure the voltage. So I'm still connected into those same two terminals. Show you that here. Give a mess of that. So we're still just connected into the two terminals here. I'm gonna grab the wheel bearing and just spin. And you can see it goes right to overload. Um, that's way over our 100 millivolt range. I mean, you can see just even turn it, I'm getting in like the 200s. So, something's weird. So now we know we have a problem on the wheel bearing side and not the truck harness side. Our wheel bearing is giving us inaccurate readings. Okay, uh, I'm going to shut this down and get us set up back over on the wheel bearing. Hey YouTube, so just a little intermission here. When I saw this crack here, when I was out working in the garage, I got excited and actually just started taking stuff apart and I forgot to tell you where the wheel speed sensor is and what it is and what it does. So this is your wheel speed sensor. Um, this black box here is actually the sensor that goes down into the actual bearing and it's held on by this Allen head right here. So what it does is there's a little uh, metal bar on the end of the sensor and it sits up against a race inside the bearing. As that race goes around, it generates AC current and that AC current is transmitted up the sensor into the truck, into the computer, and it, that, depending on what the resistance and AC um, settings are, it'll tell the truck that the ABS is functioning properly, among other things. So that's where the sensor is located and what it does. I'm sure there's other theory and operations out there on the internet if you wanted to do some more research, um, but I'll let you get back to the video. We're just gonna pop this out, see what we can see. Um, and it already looks like we might have a problem here. So this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's cracked right here. So that might be part of our issue. Uh, this is a five millimeter hex head. cracked in there and then you can just peel this thing out get some gunk off there oh, so that's probably causing our problem you see that that is the magnetic face of oh that might be part of the gasket that goes on there um that is the magnetic face that actually reads against the bearing um it's all covered in grease so that might be part of our problem i'm going to get some electrical cleaner and then we'll put this back on <clears throat> so i use this stuff just cutie electrical cleaner sorry i'm doing that off camera um Probably just gonna get a decent sized washer that'll fit. And the only thing that matters is that this sits in there nicely. Um, so we'll cobble something together to get that back in. 
And the other thing you can do is you can always buy a new wheel bearing. You can't buy the wheel bearing, you can't just buy the speed sensors is why I'm doing this. Okay, so that's gone. Put this back in where it goes. You may have to fight with a little bit. Make sure it stays clean while you're doing this. Make sure it seats in there nice. Um, and then I just went and got us just a washer. Oops. Now, I don't know what the torque setting is for this, and I definitely don't know what the torque setting is for this with a cobbled together washer on there. So we're just kinda gonna feel it out. It's just plastic, so don't go hog wild. That's probably fine. It also doesn't have any pressure to come out, so you don't really need to tighten it very much at all. All right, we got it back in. Um, now let's get this stuff back together and see if that solved our problem. So I'll move you guys over here. wiring my light here that's good for it okay so we're just gonna put this harness back where we found it so there's a little flat it's so like I said see this thing right here it'll slide onto a flat tab up there it'll go like that on top of here so if you just get up in your shot tower you'll be able to find it. Feel locked into place. Uh, and then this little rubber boot here goes back into this holder and that'll just snap shut. Yeah. And you might be wondering why I'm going through all this trouble to change a wheel bearing. Wheel bearings aren't that expensive. This one will come out easy because I've done it before. But this is a 20-year-old truck in the salt belt that spends a lot of its life pulling trailers, oh, doing it, oh, dinking around on the farm. And so this is kind of just a little bit of an effort to save money from having to buy another wheel bearing. And if it doesn't work, who knows, maybe I'll buy another wheel bearing. Maybe I don't worry about it. That just snaps back in up there. Um, let me reposition you guys and get some brake clean and I'll get this caliper back on. Get the brake parts cleaner. Spray off the hub because we've been dinking around in here. Um, try and get our caliper back on. Now I'm gonna have to squeeze pistons back in more than likely for a little bit so that this will go on easy so let me get something to do that get yourself a c-clamp this What I'm doing now is you just put a C-clamp around your caliper just so you can get it back on the rotor. Just needs to go in a little bit. Push it in a little bit. Brake rotor back on. Light up just like that. Put this back on. Get that back 
down there. Doesn't really matter which one you put in first. Just kind of get them started. up Then you should torque these to 80 foot pounds. Um, I'll do that off camera and you should look up your own torque specs just to make sure that I'm not messing with you. Man, that light is not gonna make it. Okay. Get everything back and working as it should. Just give this a little spray of spray clean. I'm gonna get this tire back on. You guys probably don't need to watch that. And then uh, I'll take you along for riding the cab, see if we fixed our issue. All right, YouTube, moment of truth. Let's see if that goes away when we pull out of the driveway. be a little shaky so I apologize in advance and there you go speed wheel sensor that's how you fix your uh, speed wheel sensor on your 2003 Tahoe I did have to do a little bit of a trick with the washer um, I don't know what's going on there. If I over tightened it the last time I did it, or uh, if it just cracked because it's, uh, I, you know, I didn't pay for an AC Delco wheel bearing, so I think I paid 50 bucks or something for them. Well, thanks for watching. Um, that will work on any of these NVS trucks. So anything from late 1999 to early 2007, Silverado, Suburban, Tahoe, Yukon, Sierra, um, any of those trucks. If this video helped you out at all, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing lots more just DIY type stuff around the garage and around the house. Um, feel free to leave a comment in the box below. Uh, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, uh, things you'd maybe like to see in the future. Um, thanks for watching and have a good day.